Here's your host, Alex Garrett. And welcome inside to this edition of the Alex Garrett Podcast Network. You know, all weekend you've been maybe thinking about the fragility of your bracket. Meanwhile, I've been thinking about the fragility of life. So today is Palm Sunday. I hope you've had a blessed one. But the last few days have been think have gotten me thinking about the fragility of life. Because while all of us have been consumed, I included, with the bracket busting that's been the first couple of rounds of the NCAA tournament in 2024. I mean, Oakland beating Kentucky, 14 over 3. And by the way, did you see that uh, Oakland, which I believe was a school in Michigan, uh, got $80,000 from the University of Louisville fan base for beating Kentucky. How about that? And I believe they turned it into merchandise uh, in their tournament run. But nonetheless, which only lasted one game because they did get knocked out by NC State. But nonetheless, nonetheless, uh, the, the brackets have been busting. But the fragility of life is more important than the fragility of our brackets, isn't it? While coaches and even fans and players may have been on the sideline or on the court complaining. Caitlin Clark, right? You were complaining a little bit. Did you not see the footage in Moscow of the concert hall being terrorized with 40 dead at least and 100 wounded? Did you not notice that Kate Middleton had her uh, cancer diagnosis reveal right on national television in the middle of March Madness this past Friday. Well, we all noticed it, but not many talked about it after it happened. But that's where I feel like we have to have that conversation. The fragility of life way outweighs the fragility of the bracket. So even if your bracket got busted, even if your team didn't go it further into the tournament, Thank God you are around to see your team even in the tournament. Thank God you were even around to complain about maybe a referee's call or a coaching decision. Or if you're the coach, complain about certain situations on the court, certain calls and whatnot. Thank God you were there to breathe and make those complaints. Because there are 40 no longer able to do that in Russia because they are dead from terrorism. And whatever you think of of Vladimir Putin, the Russian citizens do not deserve to die at the hands of ISIS. They do not. They don't even deserve to die at the hands of their own government. But ISIS? No, they don't deserve that either. And And so I just wanted to take a step back. Because there is something to the fragility of life that is so much more important but gets less magnified than the fragility of a bracket. And it's like that every March Madness. But this year, there was some real heavy news. And by the way, those that were firing off conspiracy theories and those that were firing off hateful things about Kate Middleton's cancer uh, a photoshop edit on Mother's Day in the UK just shut up now we don't need to hear you talk about how sad you are she's suffering you made fun of her while she was going through it in January and February and March so take a seat on the bench to use March Madness language and sit this one out I have had a family member my father die of cancer so I can empathize with how bad things have gotten for the royal family whether it be Sir Charles's uh, King Charles's now cancer dying cancer Kate Middleton's cancer it's not easy it's horrible but for those who are Monday morning quarterback in a photo shame on you for now saying how bad you feel for doing that 
Own up to it and realize you don't think of the royal family as people. But they are in fact real people. And they are showing us the fragility of life by what Kate Middleton did on Friday. By what's been going on with King Charles and his cancer diagnosis. So don't sit there and tell me um, that you care now. We don't want to hear that. We don't need to hear that. And Prince William and Kate Middleton have been saying they've been getting a lot of support. And I sometimes wonder, where from? Because before this video was released on Friday, a lot of people were making fun of her. Were making fun of her non were disappearance from the public life. But she clearly has been taking care of herself and meeting with the great doctors, the great medical teams that Buckingham Palace has to offer. So, whether it's this Moscow terrorism at the hands of ISIS or Kate Middleton, can we just realize that life is bigger than a bracket and basketball and sports for one second? Of this fast-paced action that now will hit the Sweet 16 next week. Yeah, I've been talking about how I'm excited when my final four picks make it to the next round. But I'm also aware of the brutalities that the world's facing. So much so. And I haven't really done this in an anti-Israel light. But what I'm about to tell you should not be taken as... Totally anti-Israeli. I'm going to go out and march and say River to the Sea, which is very hurtful to the Jewish people, by the way. Very hurtful. But I wanted to give this information from Long Reads because here's a here's another situation that we've been uh, maybe not noticing as much. First of all, Secretary Blinken has been really swinging and missing when it comes to foreign policy and being Secretary of State. I wish he put that guitar down and actually get Hamas and Israel to talk. If we're going to play that role, we have to play that role. But Hamas rejects every Israeli deal while Blinken plays his guitar. And then goes and talks to Egypt about um, how they can play a role in providing a pathway for citizens of Gaza fleeing their home. But while I believe the state of Israel, I believe Israel has to defend itself, this stat cannot be ignored. According to Sayward Darby in Long Reads, more than a thousand children injured in Israel's brutal bombardment of Gaza are now amputees. Eliza Griswold meets some of the children and the people treating them. And I talk with Dr. Ghassan Abu Tisita, who spent 43 days in Gaza performing surgeries. The number of child amputees carries long-term implications, Abu Sada told Eliza Griswold, listing his concerns. Israeli forces apparently destroyed Gaza's only facility for manufacturing prosthetics and rehabilitation. This facility was funded by Qatar. Right now, the leading manufacturer of child prosthetics, the German company Adebach, is working to supply the necessary components to children up to the age of 16. Procuring prosthetics, however, is only the first step. Child amputees need medical care every six months, Abu Sitz has said. Bones are growing faster, bones grow faster, and soft tissue and severed nerves often reattach painfully to skin. Such limb requires 8 to 12 more surgeries. Well, I'm going to post this on my podcast, on my podcast bio. You get the point. 
it's not looking good for the amputees in Gaza. The children amputees, let alone them. But, and it's another example of life being bigger than basketball. Life being bigger than this bracket. Because I've been, I've been very cautious outside of this. I, I feel like if you say certain things, you will appear anti-Israeli, anti-Semitic. When it comes to this disaster in the Middle East. I will not understand why the Israeli government sat on this intel that Hamas was going to do what they did on October 7th. But I do not understand why those who say free Palestine are yelling at innocent Jewish people on the streets of New York. Um, you know, it felt like every day for a little bit there. But alongside this amputees, I have to say, Netanyahu's decision to continue this bombing and, and, and work to an extent of getting Hamas leaders who are hiding under these hospitals. That is true. But when you see thousands of amputees and you see what the continued bombing and the continued narrative of Israel bombing has done here to American Jews and put their safety at risk. I really believe that and have believed that. The net now is indirectly, indirectly affected American Jewish lives because those American Jewish lives are always under threat when I see those who were screaming in the streets free Palestine and anti-Israeli sentiment. Because when you say NYC condemns Israel, I think you loop in those Jewish people who are innocently trying to live their life and steer away from the terrorism um, that came to them on October 7th and does come to them in the streets of Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. But when I see a story like the amputees, I cannot ignore that. As someone who wants to discuss adaptability, my goodness, the Gazan population has a lot of adapting to do now. And that includes, that includes those who have lost limbs in this battlefield. And so, to that end, if you are pro-Israel, you cannot ignore the numbers. If you are pro the Jewish people and the right to defend themselves, you still cannot ignore these numbers. But if you are Free Palestine, folks. You shouldn't be wearing pins like Mark Ruffalo did of bloodied hands that were shown at the hands of someone who murdered, you know, Jewish people. I'll send you the backstory on those pins that you saw at the Oscars. Those were by the very nature anti-Semitic. And I'll tell you why. So can we stop ignoring all these different fronts? The damage done in Gaza. The continued rhetoric here on the home front. And if I'm the Israeli government, if I'm Netanyahu, maybe the realization that, my goodness, my actions are impacting American Jews' safety. And that is on him. Yes, Hamas has rejected deal after deal after deal. But when I say life is bigger than a bracket, these are the hard conversations to have. And no matter how many deals Hamas rejects, no much tyranny they reign on those people of Palestine, the very nature of what Israel has continued to do with certain wins here and there, is more affecting 
the Jewish population of America and New York City, then it is having an effect, a positive one. Uh, on the Israel-Hamas war. So Prime Minister Netanyahu will probably be voted out. But more so than that, he needs to come to grips with the fact that what he's doing is affecting not only Gazan children, but Jewish Americans who are just trying to live life here without being yelled at by an insane free Palestine from the River to the Sea protester. And let's not, and that's not even counting what's going on on the anti-Semitism front on campuses. That's also being caused by the academia, if you will, but by the news cycle. And when the news cycle continues to say how bad a Jew is bombing Gaza, the pressures on Jewish students are getting worse. I do believe they are connected. So not only is life bigger than basketball or a bracket, it's bigger than politics. It's affecting real lives across our nation. And it all needs to end. Especially in this holy time. So yes, just like we laid the palms for Christ to enter Jerusalem. Maybe this Palm Sunday. We can lay the palms for innocent Gazans. Who had nothing to do with the Hamas terror attacks. And Israel establish a better ground game to get their nemesis and the world's nemesis and wipe out Hamas. That's my prayer this Palm Sunday. Life is bigger than a bracket.